Good morning, everybody. This is Life with Kathy Buckley, Jerry Jewell, and Toby Forrest. We had a great show last week, didn't we, girls? Oh, I had a fabulous time. I don't care about you guys, just all about me. You know, it, was, it really was all about you. Yes, it was, wasn't it? I mean, it always is. All <laughs> about you. As it's about it should time be. you guys finally caught on. Well, Kathy, you know, I mean, if you're smart, you'll know that this show is really, let's, how do we give Kathy some love? Uh, it should be the Kathy Love Show. No. How was your weekend? Fabulous. The weather was absolutely incredible. I Would spent the whole day clipping hedges. Clipping hedges? Yeah, you know how most people use that, that machine and they trim the hedges? I have one little clipper and I just clip one leaf at a time. <laughs> <laughs> I apparently have no life. And then do you like, give it some hedge spray afterwards and style it? Yeah, oh yeah, and, and it's got that wave going. <laughs> one of them has to have an afro. <laughs> how about you, Jerry? How was the weekend? I had a great weekend. I'm making progress on my book, my autobiography. And so how's the progress? It's coming along well. Actually, I didn't realize that there's a word count in a book that you have to go by. And if you have too many words, you're in trouble. And I'm very wordy. So I had to kind of go back and trim my words a little bit, but get the same story across. Isn't that exciting? Well, it's exciting. I mean, she was trimming hedges. You were trimming words. I know. I mean, I mean so everybody was just trimming. trimming. It was a <laughs> cutback weekend. <laughs> I uh, I was just, I guess, trimming the water. We played on a boat on Friday night. Oh, wow. So that was pretty cool. It was a giant speedboat and stayed oh, out wow. until 3 in the morning. So I was hurting. Oh, there's just something about you and a speedboat and a wheelchair, and the boat just takes off, and there goes Toby. I know. I just, <laughs> what happened? But fortunately, they didn't. Uh, nothing went wrong. I didn't no. have to go in the water. Did you have to wear a life jacket? Weather. No, I didn't do that. No? No. You didn't? No, I didn't. Why? Because I trust the world. <laughs> okay, well, yeah. all right. I'll let it go. <laughs> please, please. But we did have, that last week was our very first live show. We had an amazing yes. guest. We had Hilary yes. Scarl. Exactly. And I don't know if any of you listeners went out to see the movie last week. It's still playing. It is, and it's fabulous. At the Lemley Theater. It's fabulous. I, I am going it. Wednesday night. You're going Wednesday? Wednesday? You hear that, everybody? You should go Wednesday night. You can sit right next to Jerry. You can. She I'm going to the 7.30 show. 7.30 on Wednesday at the Lemley. Yes. But don't sit too close to Jerry because she moves around, so at least have one seat <laughs> empty on each side of her so if, nobody gets slapped silly. If someone's throwing popcorn at you, you just know it's Jerry. <laughs> Accidentally <laughs> shaking and throwing popcorn, popcorn in your direction. <laughs> Actually, I always leave a trail from the snack bar to my seat. <laughs> always. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I love when I get there and people are taking up the handicap space. I've had people go, well, you know, you're supposed to be here early. <laughs> like, so you're disabled. You're supposed to be there early so that you can get the seat. And I'm like, but it's reserved. I mean, I brought my own seat. <laughs> How would I possibly need to be here early? Same thing with airplanes. Like, I got a guy get mad at me one time. You know, you're supposed to be here early so you can load up. First. So you can load up first. <laughs> I was like, yeah, but some able-bodied person was using the handicapped toilet. I had to wait for them. <laughs> so. Do you know they usually reserve the bulkhead role for people with disabilities if they need them at the last minute? Do you know that? Most airlines do that. And sometimes when I check in on a flight, they automatically change my ticket regardless of where I'm sitting and put me in the bulkhead without even asking me. And I hate the bulkhead seat because I think it's like, I call it the Moses seat. The it's, Moses seat? Yeah, you, you can see first class, but you can't enter it. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good to be on I the keep, fringe of first class. I keep doing it. I love traveling because people don't know. I get in, they, I load on first, right, on the plane. And then people won't know that I'm in a wheelchair. And so they'll have to step over me. And sometimes I don't tell people. You know, they just think I'm a jerk. Like I had an old woman and she got on, and uh, I didn't, I didn't move for her. I didn't tell her, and she just looked at me like you jerk. And every she got up like five, six times during the flight. I didn't move for her one time, and I probably should have told her, but then I would have missed her expression <laughs> at the end of the flight when the stewardess came up and was like, "Things you do to entertain yourself, Toby, are amazing." It was great. 
Well, you know, we see great movies. We have wonderful guests. We have this fantastic radio show now. Um, once again, I'm just going to remind you guys, Wednesday, Jerry's going to be at the Lemley. She's going to be seeing See What I'm Saying by Hilary Scarl, our guest from last week. And we've got an amazing surprise guest today. I don't know that it's much of a surprise because I was telling people all weekend and, about and this you're guy. You're not really good at secrets keeping, honey. No, I'm not. No, I know, honey. But it's okay. We love you. But you know this guest, don't you, Kathy? Um, yeah, I adore this guest. I admire him. I, he, he's amazing. The contribution that he has made to society. He's very, very smart, very funny, and he intimidates the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, I know, I know that I know that you and our surprise special guest go way back. Yes, I, I know him very well. I've known him for twenty years, Robert David Hall. Hey, Welcome everybody. to the show, Robert David Hall. Yeah. Boy, it was hard staying quiet while you guys were all talking. <laughs> well, we're just happy to have you in studio. You're our first in studio guest. I'm glad to be. I'm glad to be. Uh, it's tight, but I like it. This is. Uh, I've recorded commercials inside closets before, so this is spacious. Does this remind you of your old radio days? Very much so, yeah. This is, uh, those days are a long time ago, but uh, I, I loved radio. Radio is one-on-one. You know, you're always talking just to one person. So it's, uh, it, it was a time of my life that I loved. I, it sounded different, though. It was, uh, you're listening to KNX-FM a little after 11 o'clock, and here's <laughs> James Taylor. That Fantastic. Guy. You hear that deep timbre? Are you kidding? I'm glad I'm wearing a padded bra. Nobody would know. Ah. <laughs> what a sexy voice that oh, wow. is. I've known these two women for too long. and I, It's a little more than 20, Jerry, but we were, we were what, in middle school or something when we met. <laughs> well, I, I might have And I've been to Kathy's house, and I'm going to leave it at that. So. <laughs> well, we all know about her hedges. Yeah. <laughs> you're that's, a a you, that's a euphemism, but don't don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, Kathy. But David, um, for our listeners, I, everyone knows you. I'm going to say everybody knows you because you have no, a fantastic no. job. I have a great job. You have a great job, uh, David. Uh, Robert David Hall plays the coroner on CSI. And how long have you been doing that? And how did that come about? I'm in my tenth year of being a series regular on CSI, the original one, the good one, the Vegas one. Uh, I got the job. I never would have gotten the job through normal channels, you know. What happened was the original person who played the coroner couldn't pronounce the ten-syllable words, and this person thought thought it was too gory, where I, of course, delighted in in this insane, you know, pathologist role, and... I did 14 guest stars, I guess, the first year, and they made me a regular at the beginning of the second year. And they uh, put my my face up in the front of the show at the beginning of the third year. So I've done 225 CSIs. Wow. wow. Pretty amazing. That's and how awesome. much of that do you retain? I mean, could you could you hypothetically go in and do an autopsy right now? Oh, sure. Absolutely. In fact, I was hoping you would let me do one on Kathy <laughs> here today. Yeah. No, it's, we went from hedges to cutting Kathy open. This is a wonderful <laughs> show. i got to go. You know, it, it's funny. I, I have a, a very small hard drive in my head. I learn the lines, I do them, and then I erase it and you know try to leave a little space for the next show. So it's, I mean, I just want to know if we ever play Scrabble. I don't know if you're the guy that I really want to go up against. I, you were not. Right. I, I was 30 when I was run over by some drunk truck driver, and uh, I was burned badly, and I spent several months in a hospital. And, you know, where's my violin? I wanted to play a oh, little man. sad <laughs> song here if I could. Here's a tear, a tear, a tear. A tear. But the, it sucked, and I, I would pr- have preferred not to have gone through that. But, you know, life is, is what it is. I, I think.